Hello and welcome to the sixth project for Excel. And your activity list is going to say five, but when you download it, it's going to say six. Make sure that you, when you save it to your computer, that you save it as underscore two rather than underscore one. I have the instructions printed, so I'm just going to start with step one, which says Sarah Latriba works at Fish Chip Electronics, which sells in inexpensive computers called Fish Chip Systems to schools to help teach computer science and electrical engineering. Sarah wants to summarize some information on Fish Chips Electronics product data into tables to help him train a new sales associate. Switch to the Systems worksheet. Select the range A1 to H9. And format the range as a table with headers using table style medium 14. So you go to insert and table and it'll say my table has headers as a default, click OK. And your table styles are over here. We need to choose table style medium 14. Table style. Green. All right, so it says the hint there, it would appear a little different, and mine's going to be a little different. Green table style medium 14. So I think that's it. Step 2. Fish Chips Electronics approved a new third-party sensor for use with the Fish Chip systems. Switch to the sensors worksheet. Enter a new record into the end of the sensors table as shown in table one below. So that's here as number 15. Oops. Tab not enter. Step 3, sort the sensors table table by smallest to largest by the cost field values. Just click inside, make sure that you're in the table. Go up on the home tab here to sort and filter, custom sort, and it wants you to sort by the cost field and smallest to largest. Click OK. Step 4. On the sensors worksheet, Cyril wants to display only sensors that are compatible with the Fish Chip 3 systems below the sensors table data. Use an advanced filter to copy all the records for sensors compatible with the Fish Chip 3 systems from the sensor table into a new range as described below. A. Enter yes into cell E19 to set up the value to filter on in the criteria range. So E19 here. So type yes. B, in the advanced filter, use the range A1 to F15. So we were normally in the home tab, so we go over to the data tab. And you can do this if you like. I, I like to highlight it. So when you click advanced filter, it's already there. If you didn't highlight it, you can just type it in here, A1 to F15. It says the criteria range is going to be A8 to F19. Copy 2 is grayed out because it's not chosen up here. So we're going to have to choose that and then type in copy the records to A21 to F21 and click OK. And you'll see that they got copied down there. Step 5 switch to the displays worksheet. Apply wrap text formatting to the range E1 to G1. All right, so you highlight those three. I'll go up to home <clears throat> and just click wrap text.
Step six, stay in the displays worksheet and remove the duplicate record in the displays table table. So we'll just click in here in the table somewhere and on the data tab, go to remove duplicates. It's default to select every single column. That's right. Click OK and it removes the duplicate, the duplicate row. Step 7. LED displays are the most popular displays sold by Fish Chips Electronics and Cyril wants to highlight these displays in, in the table. Filter the table to display only those records with the type column value of LED. So here's your type column. Click here and choose LED. So we'll deselect everything else and just, and just have LED selected and click OK. And now it filters so that you only see those with the LED value. Step 8. At the beginning of the year, Fish Chips Electronics makes a bulk order of cases for each system they sell. Cyril wishes to show his sales associate a snapshot of the number of cases that were ordered, sold, and are available at the warehouse for each Fish Chip system. Cyril already sorted the table containing this data. He just needs to insert subtotals into the table. Switch to the Cases Subtotal Worksheet. Convert the Cases Subtotal Table, the range A1, A1 to I24, into a range. So click inside here, right click, and go down to Table, and Convert to Range. Yes. All right. Step 9. After converting the table to a range, insert subtotals into the range A1 to I24 using the following options. So I'm going to highlight from A1 to I24, and in the data tab, go to subtotal. And now A says subtotals should be inserted at each change in the system compatibility. So at each change in system compatibility. B, the subtotals should use the sum function, which is already the default. C, subtotals should be added to the 2018 inventory. Cases sold and cases available values only. D, the subtotals should replace current subtotals and include a summary below the data, which are both already selected. So click OK. Step 10. Cyril wishes to highlight some additional data on the cases sold by Fish Chips Electronics. He first wants to identify how many options are available for each type of case. Switch to the Cases Worksheet and complete the following steps to identify how many case options are available for each case type. In a Step A says in cell C2, Enter a formula using the COUNTIF function that counts the number of cases with the unibody case type. Use unibody as the criteria argument and cases table body type as the range argument. So I could type it in, but instead I am going to go to my formula box and look for COUNTIF and fill it in up here. So use unibody as the criteria and for the range we're going to use cases table body type. Alright, so make sure even if you wanted to type it in this formula box or you wanted to type it in here that you put quotation marks around the unibody, um, so quotation marks in where it asks for criteria because you're looking for that word within this column. So it's not the name of a, of a column, it is the, a word in a field. All right, so B says in cell C3, enter the formula using count if. Uh, that counts the number of cases with a two-piece case type. Use two pieces of the criteria argument and cases table body type as the range argument in your formula. So I'm going to do it a little different way this time. 
double click inside, use my equal sign, and count if, open bracket, oops, another bracket, and it asks for the range and criteria right here, so here's another way you can type it in. So cases, table, and sky, and then a square bracket, and it's body type. I'm double clicking, and then a comma, and space, and my quotation marks for two piece and quotation marks, and end my normal bracket. There we go. And compact is the same formula as before, only using compact as the criteria. So we can also type it in up here. And if range this is table, square bracket, body type, and square bracket, comma, space, and compact quotations, regular bracket. There we go. Step 11 complete the following steps to determine the total number of cases were sold. For each body type, 11A in cell E2, enter a formula using the sum if function that totals the value in the case of sold column for each case with the unibody case type. Use unibody as the criteria argument, cases table body type as the range, and cases table cases sold as the sum range in argument in your formula. So again, you can go to the formula box and type in some if, and use this here. So the range is cases table body type. The criteria is unibody, so don't forget your double quotation marks there. And the sum range is cases, table, cases, sold. Okay. So it was already at the top there. So again, the range is cases, table, body, type. This time for B, the criteria is two piece. Some range again is cases table cases sold. Cases table body type criteria for C is cases sold. Cases table. Oh, whoops, sorry. Not cases sold. Compact. I was going to say I came up with a zero right here, and I was thinking that's not right. So it is compact. There we go. 187. That's right. All right. And if you're ever wondering if you uh, have the right numbers, you can flip to the last few pages of your instructions, and it will show you what it's supposed to look like at the end. Step 12 in the range H8 to H30. Create a new icon set in the conditional formatting rule as described below. So I'm going to highlight those. And it says create a new icon set conditional formatting. So we are going to go to conditional formatting, icon set, and A says use the three signs icon set. Three signs. Manage rules. 
click on this one, put it rule. And now display the green circular icon in all cells with a number value greater than or equal to 60. Greater than or equal to 60 number value. So it changes the same to number as well. And that is C. Display the yellow triangular icon in all cells with a number type value less than 60 and greater than or equal to 25. Okay. Apply. Okay. Now, you can also double check with the back of your instructions to make sure that they all look correct. Step 13, apply custom sort on multiple fields to the cases table so that the table is first sorted by system compatibility field in descending order, then by body material field in ascending order, and finally by body type in ascending. So we'll just click inside here, and then we'll go up to the sort and filter, custom sort, and first it wants to be sorted by system compatibility, in descending order at a level, then by body material, oops, body material in ascending at a level, body type ascending. Click OK. Step 14, add a total row to the cases table. Hint, the total row should appear in row 31 with a total for cases sold automatically appearing in cell H31. Using the total row, display the sum of the 2018 inventory in cell G31. So we'll click inside the cell, the table here, go to table design, choose total row. So here you see the H31 cells there automatically and they want you to display the sum for 2018 inventory, which is in G31. So you click in that cell, see the little drop down arrow, Click on that and choose sum. Step 15. Upon review of the cases table, Cyril notices the cases available column needs to be added to the table. Add a calculated column to the cases table in the range A7H30 as described below. 15A. In cell I7, enter the text cases available as the calculated columns heading. B. In cell I8, enter a formula without a function using structured references that subtracts the value in the cases sold column from the value in the 2018 inventory. It says to use square brackets around each name for structured references, so we'll go equals. Also, you can do that, and then you will get a dialog box, box popping up asking you to put at symbols in front, which you need to do, so click the OK button for that dialog box. However, where I've attempted this one a couple of times, it is not going to pop up with that dialog box for me, so I have to type it in myself. So this is what it ends up looking like. You can just follow me along and type in this if you'd like and skip the dialog box step. And it should automatically fill in. If it doesn't, you can just click one and use this little green box here to fill it in. C, using the table's total row down here, use the sum. So click on the drop down, choose sum. Step 16, Fish Chips Electronics also sells packaged sets that combine popular fish chip systems with an LED display, a case, and a simple project guide. The package table on the packages worksheet identifies the system and display included in each package by ID number rather than by name. Cyril wants to set up a simple lookup table to make it easier for his new sales associate to identify what is included in each package. Switch to the Packages Worksheet. In cell H3, create a formula using the VLOOKUP function to determine the type of system included with the package using the following parameters. A. The formula should use cell J3 as the lookup value, the range G7 to H12 as the table array, and 2 as the column index number. 
So I'm going to go to the function box and I'm going to type up VLOOKUP, click OK, and I'm going to fill that in. So our lookup value is J3. Our table array is G7 to H12, and our column index number is 2. So I'm going to click OK, and it gives you a value. So I'm going to explain how you got this. The lookup is vertical lookup. So it looks up information in columns. So what you did was you used this one right here, J3, as your lookup value. So you're looking for this value. And you're looking in the range G7. Oops. This range here, G7 to H12. So you're looking in here for 4036. And your column index number is 2, meaning you're going to look for two columns. Look in two columns. So the lookup value is 4036, and it is going to return this value to you. So what is adjacent in that second column to 4036, the lookup value? So fish chip 3 mod C, there we go. Step 17 in cell H5, create a formula using the vertical lookup function to display the name of the package using the following parameters. The formula should use H2 as the lookup value, the table name packages table as the table array and four as the column index number. So that's right here. But before we type it in, I'm just going to see if we can figure it out on our own using the knowledge we just did in the last step. So we're using H2 as our lookup value in the packages table, which is this table here, and the column index is four. So we're going to be looking in the fourth column for a value that is adjacent to our lookup value of P12687. So P12, P12687 down here, the fourth column here is $66. So I'm expecting to see $66. Let's see if we are right. So to put in the value, go to the function box. Vertical look, lookup is the first one, click OK. The lookup value is H2. Table array is the packages table. Column index is 4. 66. So there you go. That's how you use your vertical lookup. Step 18. Cyril also wants to highlight the number of packages associated with the latest iteration of the Fish Chip system, the Fish Chip 3 mod C. In cell H16, Create a formula using the dcount function to count the number of packages associated with the fish chip 3 mod C plus systems using the range A1D22 as the database, system ID as the field, and the range H14, H15 as the criteria. All right, so we're going to go to the function box. We're going to type in dcount. All right, so dcount is database count. The database is going to be A1 to D22. The field is going to be quotation system ID. The criteria, you do not need to put this in quotations here. This is H14, H15. All right, so it counts the database that we put in there and just counts up the number of fish chip three mod C packages there are. Step 19 in cell H17, create a formula using the dAverage or database average function to determine the average cost of a fish chip 3 mod C plus package using, which is doubled twice in your instructions, the range A1D22 as the database, cost as the field, and the range H14 to H16 as the criteria. So again, we'll go to our function box. We are going to type in D. Average, enter, okay, and we'll just fill in what it asks us to here. So A1 to D22 is the database. The field, our quotations, cost, and our criteria, you do not need to put in quotations here, H14 to H16. Okay, so the average cost is 7381. 